all right now let's start with the concept that how can you uh, concept of p is equal to h rho g over here in these three different vessels right and we will also make a point that how come it's very difficult to apply p is equal to f perpendicular upon a over here in order to understand the liquid pressure same everywhere right so what i am going to do is i am going to fill these three different containers with same liquid say water with to a same height right so let me call this as h above the ground this is also h above the ground like this and we are filling the same liquid that is water in all the containers but did you notice one thing that the area the bottom area of all the vessels are different right okay now let's calculate the pressure at any one point a over here b over here and c over here what do you think the pressures are at the bottom of these three vessels the answer is the same because pa is equal to h rho g where h is the depth and depth is from the top surface to the point a that is h that is the height of the vessel you may say will where the liquid is filled or depth of the point a from the top surface which is same in b and c so h remains the same rho remains the same g remains the same for all of them and i should be writing pb over here as h rho g h is same that from the top surface to point b the depth rho is same because same liquid is filled in all the three containers of course g is also the same here also pc is equal to h rho g which means basically by the application of p is equal to h rho g you can very easily state that pa is equal to pb is equal to pc and i must make a point that the shape of the vessels the bottom area of the vessel does not match over here then also the pressure is same as per the formula p is equal to h rho g now most of the students they have a confusion that sir if i apply p is equal to f divided by a f perpendicular by a the area of the bottom is different which means that the pressure exerted by these three liquids at the bottom is different then how come what's the paradox over here let me explain it to you in that way now you would be understanding this logic with the help of the vectors right okay so the first point is let me draw the pressure exerted the force exerted by the water on different walls of the vessel okay this is my vessel what this is my vessel 2 and this is my vessel 3 right so the water is going to exert a thrust on the walls like this and you always understand that the thrust is always perpendicular so if this is the wall of the vessel the water over here is going to push the walls of the vessel like this on the contrary as per the third law of newton the walls will exert the thrust in the opposite direction on the water so now the walls are going to exert the push in this direction on the water right so that is what is necessary so this is the force exerted by the water on the walls now i'm going to reverse the direction of the force and with some different color so now this is the force exerted by the walls on the water in the same way this side also this is the force exerted by the walls on the water correct right now this force will have two components one parallel and one perpendicular like this downwards because we need to resolve the vectors then and only then you will come to the reality of the concept in the same way this is f parallel and this is f perpendicular now what do you notice that these are not the only two points right the vessels are in all the directions because the vessel is like conical so everywhere on the circumference of or the point where i have resolved there are forces correct and then everywhere the forces are pointing inwards now if you resolve you will get two components like this and two components like this now what's happening with these two parallel components these two parallel components will cancel each other out because they are in opposite direction so cancelled but the perpendicular components are not going to get cancelled because there is no one to cancel off the perpendicular components so simply i am going to remove the main vector fw because that's not required now 
as well as I am going to remove this f perpendicular also because sorry f per parallel because they are going to cancel each other out. Now there is no one to cancel this f parallel f, sorry f perpendicular part I have written wrongly over here this is f perpendicular right this is f perpendicular okay. So now there is weight of the entire water in the downward direction along with this the f perpendicular gets added up. So the net downward force over here increases. Let's go back to the next container. Now over here in container number two, the water applies thrust in this direction. Correct. Thrust in this direction perpendicular to the surface. So on the contrary, the vessel applies the same force in the outward direction like this this is the force applied by the walls on the water in the same way over here also the force applied by the walls on the water would be in this direction again i would split up this into two parts two components one is f parallel another is f perpendicular but this time f perpendicular would be in the upper direction here f parallel like this and f perpendicular f perpendicular would be in the upper direction correct now what happens with f parallel they are going to get cancelled so i don't need now the fw arrows over here and f parallel since they are in opposite direction they will cancel each other out now let's analyze the weight of the water over here so the weight of the water is in the downward direction and f perpendicular are in the upward direction so what will happen the net weight of the water is going to get reduced Right. So over here, I should be saying that the net downward force reduces. What's happening in the third case? In the third case, the forces are directly perpendicular because the thrust itself is the perpendicular force. Correct. And the thrust here also is the perpendicular force on both the directions. Right. Now, let me resolve it with the vector resolution right but i need to uh, make one thing very clear that this is the force applied by the water on the walls so the opposite forces is what going to happen so the thrust or the force applied by the walls force applied by the walls on the water like this and force applied by the walls on the water like this correct now this does not have any perpendicular components and now simply these two are going to get cancelled no perpendicular components because any vector having um, any vector having orientation along x axis will not have perpendicular components so over here simply i am going to re remove these because they are op opposite and equal they are going to cancel each other off so what is happening simply the weight of the water is w in the downward direction so it remains the same so whatever is the weight of this water column, the entire weight of this water column, that is going to remain same and that itself is equal to F perpendicular in the downward direction. So if I say pressure is F perpendicular divided by A, I can very well say that this F perpendicular itself is equal to the weight of the entire column. But in the second case, the area of the cross section is small. Right. Now, I can't say that pressure is F perpendicular by A. This F perpendicular is entirely the weight of the liquid. No. Right. And the area is this shaded part, black shaded part. I can't say that F perpendicular is W because F perpendicular is W minus the entire upward force. Right. So, I'm simply writing upward forces. That is the sum of f perpendicular that is shown over here and here correct divided by the area which is small right and this area is very small that you can see i'm just writing small area over here and in the first case pressure f perpendicular sorry that is equal to f perpendicular by a i'm simply removing this one so this is f perpendicular by a here f perpendicular is not the weight of the liquid it is weight of the liquid plus all the f perpendiculars which are in the downward direction so here i must say downward forces downward forces divided by the larger area because look the area of the bottom would be over here it would be definitely cylindrical i am just showing you over here as 
the larger area because this is a cylindrical cross section so it will have a more area so i'm just writing more area now if you see the pressure in all the three will be same because in the first vessel larger downward force divided by larger area so we will get some ratio in the second case smaller area divided by the smaller downward force so the ratio the pressure is same as the first one and in the third case it is the the area divided by the entire weight of the water that is same so all in all the three cases if you understand this this becomes very easy that's why we say hydrostatic paradox we have two different explanation one is reasonably we think that okay f is uh, you know f divided by a area is larger so the pressure would be smaller but that doesn't happen that way that's why it is known as the paradox i think that this is very clear with the help of the vector uh, resolution part